Carlsbad, people, purpose, and impact. An essential podcast for those who live, work, visit, and play in Carlsbad. Good morning and welcome everyone. My name is Brett Schonsenbach and I am the president and CEO of the Carlsbad Chamber of Commerce and I will be your host today. Today I'm excited to have with me Robin Koenig. Robin is the owner and chief coach of her coach and consulting business. So uh, Robin, thank you for joining me this morning. Thank you for having me. I love this. Good to have you. Yes. And I was mentioning to Robin before we started that uh, I had been a guest on her podcast, uh, I don't know, a little over a year ago, maybe? Yeah. A year and a half, maybe. And I had such a good time that we had to have you come now and be a guest on ours. I appreciate it. It was a (laughs) blast to have you on mine as well. Thank you. It was a lot of fun. Um, So I was digging into your website and some of the other resources you have, and uh, You obviously are a certified coach, but you have a cool tagline, helping small business owners run their business like they mean business. And the word mean is really, you know, stands out. So why don't you tell everybody a little bit what that means to you and and, and why you have that phraseology there? Sure. Um, you know, it's interesting because I did get my coaching certification about five years ago and started my original business with the intention to coach others into, you know, leadership and, Mm -hmm. you know, just kind of really crack the code on what was getting in their way in their life. And what I realized was many of my clients were small business owners, Mm. which the reality was I was too. Right. Of course. Yeah. And what I noticed was that many of them loved what they were doing, but didn't know how to do it as a business. Yeah. And there was a significant difference where all of a sudden it kind of like light bulb in my head where I said, okay, well, when there's someone like myself included that just really wants to help people, I didn't start doing that because I wanted to run a business. Right. I did it because I wanted to help people. And that was a very common theme, you know, especially folks that are in healthcare, service-based industries. And so what I really wanted to do was throw in the consulting side of the work, which is saying, let me take a look at what you're trying to accomplish from a business perspective and help you. Because ultimately, that's probably not what they really want to spend their time on. And it was getting in the way of them continuing to do what they love. And that was the big question. You want to continue to help people, then we really need to look at this from a business perspective and figure out what you need. And that's where that came from. Yeah, no, that's great. I th- my experience um, with entrepreneurs in general is that they typically get into whatever their business is because they have a strong skill or acumen in this one area. And wherever they were working, they felt like they could make a better widget doing it themselves. But then, as you pointed out, actually running a business is a lot different than doing what they're particularly good at, their skill that drove them to start their own business in the first place. And uh, they need help. Absolutely. And it can feel very isolating. It can also kind of bring up some bizarre feelings of like, can I do this? You know, the the idea that, well, I'm really talented, say, in, um, you know, chiropractic, right? That's what they do. I mean, doing, doing it forever. And yeah. then to feel like, gosh, well, why can't I do this? What's, you know, it can be really frustrating. And so what I really like to do is help them understand it's okay that if you don't want to do that part of your business or you don't feel like it's your skill set, but let's find the resources that can help you. This does not need to be a solo show here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's great. You have some other verbiage on your website that I thought was very poignant. And it says that um, you work with overwhelmed small business owners struggling with being a one-person show. And that's it, right? Because most people, when they start out, that's the reality. And even if they're not literally a one-person show, they're typically wearing a lot of different hats. And that, I feel like you're um, definitely hitting on a pain point right there with that <laughs> with that wording uh, for people out there. Yeah. And this, the, you know, again, the small business world, I typically work with clients that have, you know, less than 10 employees or none at all, you know, a lot of solopreneurs. Yes. And it's that feeling of, well, I I can't afford 
this or I can't yeah. bring on another person this. And it's hard to come up with those creative ideas of how they could build a team that might look a little different than what they were used to, especially if they had been in a different environment before. I came from the corporate world. Yeah. You know, I understand what it feels like to be in an organization that is huge, that has multiple offices and various departments and all of these things. And then I shifted to the nonprofit sector, yep. which was everybody's doing everything to get it done. Yeah. And it almost didn't matter what your job was, just we've got to all chip in and do it. So I understand what it feels like. And the mindset is usually what gets in the way of either I have to do this by myself, I can't afford to do it with somebody else. So I really try and help them open their, their idea bank to what other things could they look at, resources, systems, people, automations, whatever it is, to build a team and a support structure for their business to be able to operate. Very cool. And one of the things you mentioned, again, on your various resources is that you have this unique hybrid approach to coaching. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little cliffhanger here. We're going to take a brief pause to have a, a, a word from our sponsors. And when we come back, I'm going to have you tell us what that unique hybrid approach is. So we've been talking to Robin Koenig, and Robin is um, a certified coach and has a coach and consulting business. And we were talking about her unique approach to helping businesses grow and expand. And so tell us about your hybrid approach. Sure. So when I first got started, like I mentioned, um, I got my coaching credentials with the idea that I was going to help coach people to do whatever they wanted to do in their life. And coaching is very unique in its modality in the sense that it's really about helping people solve problems themselves, figure out what those solutions are, yeah. break through those barriers. And I love doing that. And what I noticed was that with the experience that I have in the corporate environment, nonprofit environment, I've also been freelance, I've kind of done a lot of different things, right. was there were a lot of questions that my small business owner clients had that I was hesitating in helping them figure out the answers together. Mm. And I think it was really just my thought process that if I was a certified professional coach, that's all I should be doing. And I decided that that wasn't going to work for me and mm. it wasn't going to work for my clients. And so I took on the consulting piece of it to say, yes. sometimes people need an answer. And I have the ability to give them a perspective that they might not have, right. which consulting is just another modality. And it was a true complement to what I could do in the coaching realm. So by looking at their business, giving them some ideas and saying, hey, let's look at your finances or let's look at your, you know, your brand voice and give them some ideas and some guidance and some answers. And when they get stuck that's when I coached them through it. Nice. So I blended the two modalities and yeah. they work great together. I mean, it sounds, it sounds like a natural, you know, melding, but now that you have kind of walked through it, um, that's true. I guess we have people who consider themselves consultants and totally other people who consider themselves coaches. And you don't really hear people talking about that as a blend. Yeah, and, and it's fine to exist in those specific right. modalities, and, and that's what you do, and that's great. It wasn't working for me, and so I decided to say, well, just because I hadn't necessarily seen it done that way didn't mean that I couldn't create it that way, and yeah. that's what I did. No, that's wonderful. Another thing, another phrase that you used was helping small business owners go from functional to optimal, and so... I mean, that is a, a big thing that, well, we all need, um, you know, it's, I need it. Everybody needs it to get to optimal. So um, what are some of the traditional things that you've, as you've worked with a variety of different clients that, I mean, I feel like myself, one of the things I struggle with is um, delegating as much as I should, you know, holding too much, too close to the vest at first or Maybe all the time. Um, but, uh, you know, so what are some of the common things that you've seen as you've worked with clients that you've helped them so that they can truly get to optimal? Yeah, I love the that phrase because that really does uh, exist in the coaching industry where coaching takes people from that functional place like, oh, it's fine to optimal. Really, what do you want it to be? What's that ideal and how do you get there and build the bridge? 
a lot of times it's actually one of the words that you mentioned is that idea of should. Mm. When we say the word should, we're actually looking at it from a fear-based perspective. Mm. And it's, Interesting. there's a lot of reasons why we might look at it that way. You know, we think that society might look at it or other people, there's judgment associated mm. with it. And so when we should on ourselves, yeah. it comes forward as it's not really a conscious decision. I'm doing it out of fear. Mm. And so that's actually a lot of what I help people shift is in order to get to that optimal place, we really need to look at how are you thinking about something? It stems from a thought or a belief before it can turn into an action. Mm. And that's where we really dig deep. Oh, that's excellent. Yeah, because the like who determines what should or shouldn't be and you know what scripts have, <laughs> have mm -hmm. I and all of us bought into what different of course there are different scripts for each person but um but that's great you mentioned a little bit about your experience and I have to give you huge kudos cuz um on your website you used you said that you have a plethora of corporate and nonprofit experience. That's my favorite word in the English language is plethora. So, <laughs> so you get a lot of points for, for doing that. But um, yeah, tell us a little bit about, you mentioned it, but tell us a little bit about what some of your corporate and nonprofit experience was. Yeah, that's so funny. I don't know. I love words. Yeah. So it's, <laughs> that, that makes sense. And I'm glad to hear that you enjoy that word. My, my actual career journey when I first, you know, I, did the typical route. I went to college, got a degree, and um, my degrees are in apparel merchandising and costume construction technology. Costume construction technology. Yes. Now you're speaking my language. My kids are all theater kids. So, you know, costumes are key to a, a, a thriving, amazing production. Right. And I've made a lot of them. Oh, I bet you have. How fun. And so when I left school, I moved from Indiana to California. And what I wanted to do was get into the entertainment business and be a stylist, which ah. I did. So I was a wardrobe stylist. I did primarily movies and TV and music videos and all wow. of the crazy things. And I worked freelance for about three and a half years until I said... I need a quote real job, mm -hmm. you know, with yeah. the benefits and in my brain, what, what would that provide for me? Some sure. stability. So I really shifted in my career from that into marketing and promotions. And I worked on the agency side, ah. which I loved. It was great. Then I was like, well, okay, I love this, but I really want to work for a, a strong brand. Yeah. So I went from the agency side into marketing and communications on the corporate side until I got laid off. Yeah. And, and, you know, it was a great journey. I loved what I did. I did it for about 12 years. And when I went through that first layoff, I was really scared. Mm. I had not been through anything like that. I felt like my all of my security was gone. Mm. You know, I was a single mom. I had, you know, a mortgage. I had a lot of responsibilities. And I was like, what am I going to do now? Mm -hmm. An opportunity came forward to work in the nonprofit sector, yep. which I had no experience, zero. Yep. I was, I have no idea what I'm going to do. And I just said, but I'm going to go for it because I believe in the mission. Yeah. And so I stepped into that role and it was a huge shift as well, totally different systems. And what I realized was that I had so many transferable skills that I had taken from all of these different career, you know, routes that I had taken from the freelance, from the agency, from the corporate side and, and really used them in that nonprofit, you know, work. And that lasted and it was great until I got laid off again. Ah. And that was really kind of my big aha moment where this time I wasn't as scared. Yeah. And I don't know really what changed. Some of it might've just been maturity and age and different life circumstances. Sure. And I just said, you know what? I wanna do something now for myself. I wanna be the one that gets to decide. Still a huge leap of faith. I just said, I'm gonna go and create my own business and this is what I wanna do. And so then you merged in that experience as well from the nonprofit into all that those various stops along the way in the corporate world. And now add to that, you have the experience of starting your own venture, right? And mm -hmm. so that's a lot of the people you end up consulting and coaching with is, as you mentioned, solopreneurs and small business owners and, and away you go. So I, it sounds like a, a fantastic blend of um, experience that you can bring to the table for any of your any of your clients. If we were to say, what does your perfect, what does the ideal client look like for you? What would that profile be? Hmm. So 
like I mentioned, I do get a lot of interest from a small business owner that, again, might have a few people working for them or might be looking to add a few, a few people um, or the solopreneur that just says, I don't ever want to hire anybody, but I really want to figure out how to make this last longer. And a lot of times they're maybe three to five years in yep. and and they're just kind of hitting that wall yes. of, A, I d- I'm overwhelmed. I, I don't know where to go anymore. Maybe I never even really had a plan to begin with. And that's fine. I'm not saying that every business needs to have a very specific traditional plan, but if they don't have a roadmap, is yeah. what I prefer to call it, then they are going to run into problems because they're kind of all over the place. And and that feeling of, you know, not being very focused and kind of frazzled and not really sure of, you know, that certainty of that your business will survive. Yeah. And and so it's that it's that small business owner that wants it so badly. They believe in what they're doing but they just might not know all the nuts and bolts. And when you're so close to it, you yeah. love what you do. You can't always see the possibilities. That is so true. Mm-hmm. Mm. So that's that's the typical client. And sure, I always have a couple of that are maybe uniquely different, right. you know, but that's probably the, the most ideal client that I typically yeah. work with. And um, they could learn more about you on your website? We want to share that with everybody? The website's the best place to go. They can contact me through there, set up a call to just kind of talk about what they're experiencing and how I might be able to help. So I always do that as a complimentary, you know, uh, conversation. Wonderful. LinkedIn is fine too. Yeah. Those are probably the top two places. And tell everybody what your website is. Uh, RobinKoenig.com. Koenig.com. And so you, you should spell Koenig. It's Robin with a Y. Yeah. And Ko- Koenig, sorry. K-O-E-N-I-G. There you go. RobinKoenig.com. Yes. You said, yeah. And you also have, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, a cool podcast that you've done called Rare Find Voices. And so they can find that on your website as well. Yes. Yeah, which you have some interesting interviews there, if I don't say, do say so myself. And before we... Um, hit the record button. We were talking about other fun stuff in life outside of just business and um, got your Lancer football going on tonight here in Carlsbad. But you have a, um, a daughter who just graduated this past year, right? Off to South Carolina? Yes, I have actually two that graduated oh, this, year. this year. My son graduated and he's working on cars and getting his degree in the vocational side, and, you know, master technician. And then my daughter, who's uh, at University of South Carolina on a Navy ROTC scholarship. I saw that. That's yep. tremendous. My oldest is finishing up one more year at University of uh, uh, UC Irvine. Okay. And then I have a junior in high school, Go Lancers, yeah. um, playing all kinds of sports. So we have a very full life. I'm very blessed. That's wonderful. And and you were sharing, um, you and your husband actually took a road trip to drop your daughter off at the University of Southern uh, South Carolina. That's a, that's a hefty road trip. It was. It was, you know, one of those where you think, well, we're just going to go here. And then it kept getting bigger and Mushroom. bigger. Well, so-and-so is only six hours away. Let's go see them. And then another six hours away. And all of a sudden you realize you're 3,000 miles away from home. So it was an adventure. Oh, that's awesome. Well, that's great. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to come and share with us today about um, your business and and your approach and and everything. And we really appreciate you. You've you've done a couple of nice workshops for us here at the Chamber at First Friday Breakfast, and we appreciate that as well. And uh, just encourage anybody who wants to know more to go out to robinkoenig.com and uh, find more. Thank you, Brett. I appreciate it. And I truly do love being a member of the chamber. It's been a wonderful experience. So I appreciate that. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. Thanks for joining us on our Carlsbad People, Purpose and Impact podcast today. If you enjoyed it, please hit the follow button on wherever you get your audio. And please tell a friend. We would love to hear your feedback, which you can share at carlsbadpodcast.com. You can leave us a review, ask a question, or leave an audio comment, which we can play on the show in the future. And that's all we have for today. Can't wait to see you next time on Carlsbad, People, Purpose, and Impact. And remember, share some kindness today. It's free, creates goodwill, and makes you feel great.